So if you go through the transaction, um, if you actually buy the product, just fill it in and then you can fill in fake details, that's fine. Or you don't have to okay. if you don't do it. But at this point, this is the transaction result. So, uh, Can you get that, please? I've never got gotten a trans it always says your transaction wasn't accepted or has already Are you been using my out. site or your site? I'm using your site, but I've tried my site. So on your site, um, on whatever on whatever site, but on my site, um, when you're here did you fill everything out here? Yeah, it's it's not I just can't get it on the transaction results page. It goes direct to your uh, your account page. Well, we might have to look at it during the break, but if you can't okay. quite get it to work, that's okay. Uh, so here, I've just filled in some fake things, obviously, and uh, <clears throat> then went over to purchase. So I added a pecan pie. Uh, this will work with either the real or virtual. doesn't matter because it's not a real site yet. Um, so I filled all of that in, and notice this was the question earlier. How do I get my picture? Well, if your picture... If your email is linked to a picture, then it'll show up. If yours doesn't get a picture, don't worry about it. Uh, but I just filled in some fake stuff, and I said same as billing, so I don't have to retype it. Remember that. It's annoying to have to retype the billing address if I already got shipping, and it'll be the same. Agree to the terms, and then when you do purchase, hopefully then it goes over to the transactions screen. And so it shows that I bought that product. Um, and that should send an email to, to your email account. So again, if you did this or not, that's OK. But I'll show you what it looks like. I did do a transaction here. And if I go back to the dashboard, and when I go to the dashboard, now I'm getting some data here two orders and it was at 1098 average order five dollars and then it says here sales by month July August and October in October I've sold this one item number two was that one etc and at the top here I can search but I'm gonna get this at a glance when I first log in that's nice. And then I can go into detail over here, store sales. So if you do manage to buy one of these fake products, then you can go to store sales. This is what you will see. You will get an email as the administrator because um, that's what we've set in the settings. And then we can log in here and check what is the status of things. So my first order, and it says who bought it in their email and the amount and its current status and all of that stuff. I can look at this particular item number or order number and it gives me the detail. Here's the shipping info, the billing info, payments, etc. Here's where it says what kind of payment was used, what did they fill out in that, how did you find us, the actual product. No, no notes were added to that product. I can create a packing slip. So it gives me a nice packing slip. If for some reason the person says, well, I never got the order, here we have a button, resend the receipt. And that sends it to them. Is there a way to get a little note on there if there are any problems, email or? I can, you can do it yourself right there. When you no, I mean something that would go to the customer. The order notes doesn't show up on the packing slip. No, it doesn't. Um, okay. You know, you would have to do it separately. And the other product, I can go back to store sales and look at the second sale. And again, all of that is, is filled in. 
I'm going to try this. Uh, the birthday cake, which is sold out. So I need to put a I need to put a quantity of one. I just want to see what it looks like if a person does add description and personalization. So here in the dashboard, it's got an exclamation point because the product is sold out. Notice right here, stock. And then I'm going to edit that one to put in that I do have stock. Okay, so let's say I'm a consumer and I go to that product. And I can say, please write. this JPEG. I canceled this earlier, but I want to see what it looks like, so I'm going to actually upload a picture. I'll check out, and it remembers me, which is nice. Now if I go back to the dashboard, I will see that there have been three orders, more sales, etc. The third, the latest sale is that birthday cake, and I can look at store sales. There's the third sale. Users custom fields. Please write happy birthday. Use this JPEG. <coughs> so this is all built in. The plugin allows people to upload a picture, uh, add a custom description. I have to go in there to my store sales and then I'll see it. Now this status here says order received and we have different statuses. Once this is fully set up with PayPal, this should update itself automatically. We've got this this um, we've got this manual payment gateway which doesn't do anything. It's just for testing purposes. So it's stuck on order received. Let's say that a person uh, did go through the whole process that we could go in and say payment accepted and closed order, whatever. But if we've got this set up with PayPal, PayPal will be communicating with our site automatically then. When a person does pay and their credit card or debit card is accepted, PayPal will automatically set this to um, accept payment accepted. And now within the system, we'll have here a list of all orders that were placed, all those that are received or pending or declined, and those that were accepted and that are complete. I suppose there is a subtle difference between payment accepted and order closed. Usually when I see this, it's on accepted and transaction is done from our end. <coughs> so again, this should happen automatically once we've set up PayPal. And then is there a way to change that when you've actually shipped, or is that something else? That, that, is, a, that is something else, uh, because that has to do with, if we are selling our own product out of our garage, then we have to take that product to the post office and do it ourselves, and then come here and say that it's been sent. Uh, so it's not automatic, but... Notice we have job dispatched, which I suppose is their term for shipped. And then if I do get that um, product shipped via UPS or 
post office and such, and they give a tracking number, I can add it here, and then the person will, will then know what their tracking number is, and I can say send that email over to the customer. So again, it makes it seem so easy when you do it on Amazon or any store, Target.com, etc. You just put in your credit card number and wait for it to get there. But a lot of stuff is happening in the background. That physical product has to get to you, perhaps cross-country. Your credit card has to be processed. The, the money then has to be transferred from your account to their account. And then it has to be dropped off or picked up by, by, by some parcel carrier and sent through an airplane and sent to you, and then you get it on your doorstep and all of that stuff. Now you're in charge of. We still have to talk about some of that stuff, taxes and shipping and, and so forth. This screen is pretty straightforward. You go in here and see the, this detail. And again, this is stuff that's getting saved in your WordPress site. So you're not saving any credit card data here, but you are saving people's email and phone number and address. And that's enough stuff to maybe, you know, identity theft a person. Uh, so well, that's why it's important to get the SSL from, from Bluehost or, or GoDaddy, and that way we'll have a little lock up on our site to give us some more protection. So one of the other things we need to talk about related to our products, we looked at adding a product and a virtual product, categories and tags and such, taking a, a peek at our sales screen. Uh, I want to talk about variations. A lot of us will need to deal with that. I want to sell t-shirts, small, medium, and large. In my case, I want to sell cookies, a batch of six, a batch of 12, a batch of 24 chocolate chip cookies in those three variations, or maybe um, pecan cookies. But those I only sell in, in a dozen or two dozen because they're special. So I need variations. We'll talk about that now. Any questions, however, up to this point? Yes. Um, OK, mine's going back a little bit. On that virtual product, Mm -hmm. Where were they downloading it? Now they're getting an email, or is something going to come up on their... They're going to get an email. Oh, in their... the download will be in the email. Exactly. Yeah. And it will automatically dispatch? I mean, I don't have the... There's going to be an email, and it's going to say, click here to yeah. download your product. They click it, and it'll be coming off of our server. And then okay. they just right-click download, and then they get it from our server. So we don't have to do anything more. But we can always, if they tell us, well, I bought my product and I, and I deleted my email or something, yeah. you can always go back to the particular uh, sale okay. and then say right here, resend receipt, and that'll have the link okay. again. So whenever you use that delivery option of, of or download or whatever, it will automatic, automatically dispatch an email when the person pays. That's right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. With, and it'll include the... The download link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then on the topic, is it possible after the purchase, content of purchase, then you on the screen, and you can download right away? So exactly. It's going to be right away. Because if, if people are paying with a credit card, that can happen, that can be authorized very quickly. Yeah, you instead of leaving the site go to your email, mm -hmm. you get on the site, but then you are on the screen, then they can download. Yeah. Uh, on their yes, on their inbox, it'll it'll have the link and it'll come back to the site with the right address. I'm saying, I'm saying this is redundant, right? After you make a purchase, you can you're still on the site. Is it possible to no. To download it from right here? On the, on the website, if we are being no, used. I don't think so because the only thing I see here are the transaction results. And normally this message would say anything that you want to download will be in your email. So I don't think there's another way to download it from here. You have to check your email. All right, let's talk about then making variations. So this one needs more setup because here now you have to deal with uh, what are the possible, uh, what are the possible um, quantities that you're selling? And on this one, 
uh, you need this setup. So first I would say we create the variations and then we start to bake the products. So let's go like this. Let's go over to our products and go to variations. So under products, the variations. Vari variations allow you to create options for products. For example, if you're selling t-shirts, they will have a size option that you can create. Sizes will be the variation set name and it will be a new variant set. You will then create variants, small, medium, and large, which will have the variant set of size. Once you have made your set, you can use the table on the right to manage them. You will be able to order your, your variants by dragging and dropping them. So this, this is often confusing for beginners. So let's say, let's say we understand this. It says, if you're selling t-shirts, they will have a size option. So t-shirt is the big category, the product, t-shirt. And then it's going to have small, medium, and large. So size will be the variant, will be the variation set name. The size is what's going to vary. Size is either going to be small, medium, or large. So the organization is size. You will then create variants, small, medium, and large, which will have the variant set of size. So up here, notice, variation set. Choose the variation set you want to add variants to. If you're creating a new one, then select new variation set. So this is saying, I'm going to sell cookies either as 6 or um, 12 or 24. So what, what would be a name for that? Like batch of cookies, perhaps? Quantity? No. Maybe quantity, but that'll confuse people with yeah. the little number down there. So I'll say batch size. Maybe we can think of a better name later. We can change it, of course, but we'll say batch size. Because I could use this for cookies or maybe even um, um, donuts. Right? The variation is going to be 6 donuts, 12 donuts, 24 donuts, or 6 cookies, 12 cookies, 24 cookies. So batch size. Don't worry about the slug, it'll fill itself in. Description. Not prominent by default again, might show up depending on the theme. Um, I don't think we need one at this point, we can go back though. Then variation price. This is, what is the most base price, perhaps? Let's say the minimum that we have to sell is six cookies. So let's say that's five dollars. So at the very minimum, if someone doesn't choose 12 or 24, they have to buy six cookies and that's going to be five dollars. So we can set this either as a value or as a percent or as an increment and such. It says here, you can list a default price. You can list a regular price, $18.99, differential price, so a dollar more, or divide by negative two, which doesn't that give an imaginary number, dividing by a <laughs> negative number? No. Square root of a negative number. Or even a percentage base, so 50%, plus 50% or minus. No, I see. It's not dividing. It's saying like either or. Either $1.99 or minus $2. Or 50% more or 25% less. So I'm not going to fill anything out here yet. But uh, imagine how this is. In my real world example of my, of my restaurant client, uh, you have the option of buying soup in 10 ounces or 12 ounces. The default is a 10 ounce soup. So we would put in there $5. If they chose the one that is two ounces more, then we can add, you know, 10% more. So no variation price so far. I just created the top organization, batch size, so click Add New Variation. Now what happens on the right side is we've got, okay, batch size. Now we're going to set, up, set upon creating a batch size of six cookies, 12 cookies, 24 cookies. So at the top here, very important, now select batch size. To it, we're going to add 6. 
six cookies, but then we can only use it for cookies. Remember, perhaps I want to use this also for donuts. So I'll say six, uh, six items. Or we can say half a dozen. Now we can say the price of something that's half a dozen, five dollars. Of anything that's half a dozen. Description, variation price, five. Half a dozen of what I'm selling is $5. And make sure that it is then a child of the batch size. We can also just write here six. Half a dozen, six. And then we'll say add new variation. On the right side now it shows Half a dozen, it's indented. Half a dozen is a variation of the batch size. And we'll do the same for one dozen, and then two dozen. So up at the top here, it already remembered. We were talking about batch sizes. If it doesn't say it, make sure you select batch size. The next variation is one dozen, 12. Price. It doesn't. We'll say. Here I'm sort of also doing um, calculations uh, based on price and such. So if we do uh, six is five dollars, and we'll do twelve and twenty-four. Double of that would have been ten dollars. We'll say eleven dollars. Twenty-four, twelve. So one dozen is going to be sold for eleven dollars. Yes. <laughs> you can tell I'm not good at math. <laughs> I'm worse at math. <laughs> That's true. You can put into your cart two half a dozen. And then the people that really uh, think that they are great shoppers will do that. Okay, and then that might entice them to buy three of those. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we win, actually. Yeah, they think they've outsmarted the... Yeah. I'm going to add that yeah. variation. <laughs> and then uh, one more. Let's see, batch size two dozen. This time we'll write here 16. So when you add that variation, now you've got here, batch size. That's the, uh, that's the drop down that will appear next to the cookie. It'll say, you know, chocolate chip cookie, batch size. Give me six, give me a half a dozen, give me 12 of them, or give me 24. Add to cart. So that's how we select the variation. Yes. I'm not sorry, yes, how did we distinguish that applied going to cookie? We haven't yet. Okay. We're creating this because then this could apply to donuts. So we have donut. Exactly. A dozen cakes. Half a cake. Half a cake. So this is why you have to. What's that? We can do slices. You know, we can have. Um, we can sell uh, pie by the slice and then have variations that say. You know, by the slice, and then we can have one, three, or six. Whatever way we want to vary. vary. 
And so this is what another planning stage that you have to do. You have to figure out what are my categories, what are my tags, what are my variations. And honestly, the, the one of the clients that I have that we do this from, this is one of the complicated things, especially when we want to when the owner wants to change prices, because we have to go in and okay, this can be sold. 12 ounces of soup or 10 ounces of soup, and we have to go into each of those and increase, you know, the five cents for this one and the three cents for that one. And then there's 20 products that they're selling, so we have to go into a lot of screens and change all of them. And it is. Well, the last time that that was changed was when the minimum wage went up. So it depends up to you when to change it. So that's, these are my, this is my variation set for the moment. Let's make a cookie and then apply this to some cookies. So everyone has, does it look like this? Everyone's got it indented. You've got the little dash. That means that these are variants of this variation. Let's go to products, add new. We'll say chocolate. Cookies. On this one, as uh, another way to do this, well, I'll get to that in a moment. So the name of the, the, the name of the product, the description, of course, tags. Uh, I'm going to select chocolate right there. We've got a lot being sold for chocolate. I'm going to also select kid-friendly. Maybe these are organic. I got a category of cookies. Make sure you select that. Product pricing. This is the one. This is another place where we can select a base price. What I what we noticed actually when I use this for a client, people I mentioned this in a, in a class yesterday in programming where we where we where I had said when you're doing any sort of programming, you, th you have to think, how is the user going to screw this up? And how am I going to provide a solution? When we were talking about that, we were talking about people writing in uh, the number of a class. Well, what if a person doesn't write a number and they write words? That's the wrong kind of data being collected, so we have to deal with that. What I discovered in this client that they were going to buy you know, tacos, uh, and it had the option, okay, choose, do you want the taco of um, the variation? Do you want a taco, a grilled taco, or a soft taco? But it says, you know, taco type. Taco type, grilled taco, soft taco. So if you don't select anything, either grilled or soft, it's going to take the variation or the option of choose a taco. And we were discovering that we didn't have a price there. So that was trying to be sold for zero dollars. So here, we want to put at least a basic price, because a person may not choose a dozen or half a dozen. They may want one cookie. So I'm going to put one dollar there. I'm just letting you know to be aware of that, that if a person does not choose any variation, what is the minimum price that they're going to be charged? At least a dollar. And now notice that we've made a variation under here. We're on the setup. We have to do two things. We need to say that this product will have variations, and then we can manage it up over here. So here we can say, which what of what of these things do I want to show? And usually all of them. That's why we made it. So just select batch size. So now what's going to happen? It'll have a drop-down box that says batch size, and from there they can select half a dozen, one dozen, two dozen. Maybe this particular product will not be sold in half a dozen. So we can do that. 
I want the three variations available. So generate variations. And here's where you can then fine tune the price. But I've got the variations that say this cookie can be sold as a quantity of one, one dollar, or in six, twelve, or twenty-four. And actually, maybe when we do the next kind of cookie, pecan cookie, maybe those are a little more expensive. I add a dollar to each of them. But these all start off with uh, these variations. So a couple of steps here. As I said, it's a little more complicated. You want to make sure you generate the variation. And when you go here, I feel better than to save the variation, even though I didn't change anything. Save that variation. And now publish the product. So right here under Setup, it should show the variations that we created a moment ago. You want to select it and click Generate Variations. Well, that was the whole thing we, we were talking about over here under Variation Screen. I'll help you in a moment because that's a, a couple steps back. Any... Yes. Um, what do you want to set up? One dollar for a when you when you choose a it should be mandatory to use a validation, right? If mm -hmm. no, what, what is the point? What would you want to say that value the dollar? What for? What do you want to use that parameter? Well, uh, that's possibly when the when the person doesn't pay attention to what they're doing. Okay. So if I go here, you know, but next you page. Get that value back because to avoid crashing or why? To, to avoid selling a product for free. If we don't put any value there, see at this point it says please please select. Batch size. Batch size is, is the name of the, of the variation set right here. Batch size. That's the text that appears next to the drop down. Batch size. And then we've got 6, 12, or 24. Technically if you don't choose anything here, add to cart, depending on your theme, because I know I've seen this, it might not let you proceed. So okay. as a safety, I put at least $1. But maybe they're going to still add to cart something that is $200, and they're going to be charged for $1. I'm just using $1 as an example. Obviously, you're going to choose. I don't think that's happening in targets. They, sometimes they have some gifts. Oh, really? And they, you know, with gift cards and stuff, you can be using the one gift card after another. Oh. So you found the secret. <laughs> so uh, let's look at our product in the front end here, chocolate chip cookies. Notice uh, on, in my case, because uh, in our settings, we had told it to show uh, four products in total per page. Now I've got a brand new page two. Right here, next page, last page. So in the next page, We've got chocolate chip cookies. And on this screen, I'm seeing several things. Product options. Well, if I want to change that, most likely I have to edit the code. Product options. Batch size is the name that we wrote of the variation. In this case, I guess they updated the plugin. I cannot add something without setting the, the variation. Half a dozen. And notice this says, when it's on select, I can't go back to it, but it said from $5 up to sixteen dollars so let's say I want half a dozen of that product add to cart you know my checkout screen here shows well you've got a quantity of one of half a dozen and yes we could figure out that if we put in two we can get a whole dozen cheaper than actually choosing dozen one dozen, and that'll be eleven dollars. So that's the concept of the variation, and we did a bunch of setup in our regards to it, so we'll do it again in a moment, but let's make sure at this point it works for us. Great. 
Yes, as I said, I didn't think about that, but uh, I'm showing you how it works. Well, yeah, but then you have to decide, well, do I want that many donuts? Am I going to eat that many donuts? <laughs> So yeah, it's up to you to decide how variations will work for you. In my case, I didn't think about it. Alright, so let's do another one. Let's do uh, another batch of cookies. Let's do another batch of cookies here, a different kind of cookie, and we'll just repurpose that variation, but then we will change it because these cookies might be a little more expensive. So we'll go back to our products and we'll add a new product. This one will be the classic snickerdoodle cookie. So we'll put in the tags, put in the category, and then we'll do the variation. So let's make up a new cookie here. Let's see what we'll, what we'll work with tags here. I'll do kid-friendly again, and um, maybe just leave it kid-friendly. Uh, it's going to go into the cookies category. If you've got lots of categories, you could also switch over to most used right here, and then that'll show you the most used. We don't have that many, so here I am. Price, base price just in case. Let's see, these are more expensive, so I'll put two. If somehow something goes wrong, it won't be sold for zero dollars. It will at least be sold for two dollars. I'm going to add the variation of the batch size, but actually just to change it up on this one, I'm not going to be I'm not going to sell these in 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 half dozens. Only one dozen and two dozen. And I'm also going to change my prices here. These things not only are they hard to to write and say but they're hard to make. So we'll say these are $1 more. So 12 for a dozen and then 16 uh 17 for who does?
So you want to publish. View the products page. Here's our product. Batch size. This particular one, perhaps then we don't want a quantity here. You know, we can avoid that, that thing about, well, why don't I just buy two of half a dozen and save some money? I think we can turn that off per product somewhere about not showing a quantity. So they have to choose then uh, the dozen or the two of the variations that we create. So we're uh, actually looking at the clock. We're just about out of time. We've still got several things I wanted to do, but we'll do them next time. I want to, right now this is called products page. I want it to be called the bakery or the shop or something. And I want it that, let's say I roll over uh, shop, and here it'll say the categories themselves. Show me all cookies. Show me all cakes. Show me all pies. We need to do that with... Um, making a custom menu and, and then displaying categories. We'll do that next time. And then we'll talk about uh, PayPal, setting it up to actually buy items, and then uh, shipping and, and tax and uh, SSL and all of that. Next week will be the fifth week of this class, the last day. Uh, and that's what we'll be doing next time. So what I'm going to do at the moment is create the, the duplicator plugin, and then we'll have a little lab time. Question? I noticed, did you notice that you're yeah, it didn't go at the end instead of at the, it went instead to the beginning, so I think that has to do with, I don't know, maybe a little bug? Ladies? 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 I'm still talking. What was that? And I think I think on so mine, if you go to page two, it's also presented on page two. Also on page two? That's at least in my case. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Well, we'll figure that out next time. Not sure why that's going on. But we have the ability to organize our products. If we go back to products and we look at all our products, we can drag and drop these and put them in the order that will show up in the cart. So you can just drag a particular item and that's the order that they'll show up in the in the product screen. 